The sign that you see here tells that in this river valley a nature corridor is being developed. The corridor will connect the Veluwe, the largest Dutch nature area, with the river Rhine which flows to the south. Nature areas and corridors together shape the Dutch national ecological network. And Dutch government and civil society organizations together have worked to create this network. But of course when nature corridors are established, there are also conflicts with other land use claims. Here, for instance, an industrial zone had to be removed in order to make place for the corridor. Put in more abstract terms, we could say that this corridor and the wider network is not just an ecological network, but it's also a social and cultural network. At the Environmental Policy Group, we study these social dynamics of nature views, nature practices and public participation. We study nature protection not just in countries like the Netherlands, but also in the Global South. Their conflicts between nature protection and other land claims are even more acute. They often involve serious confrontations between, on one hand, the nature views and practices of ecologists and tourists from the north, and on the other hand, the land use practices and cultural views of the locals. In Kenya, for example, the establishment of private game reserves has led to questions about social justice and democracy in nature conservation. Even though game reserves lead to opportunities for local communities, they also restrict their access to vital natural resources. Is this fair? And who decides? Investigating the social dynamics of these conflicts can contribute to finding solutions. At the Environmental Policy Group we do so with a focus on arrangements for participations and the role of cultural views and practices in nature protection. Marine resource use and biodiversity protection are global issues. Uh, decisions over these issues are influenced by networks of global, regional and local actors. The Marine Stewardship Council, for example, is an important actor in the global sustainable seafood movement. It links together fishermen and consumers and governments to promote the responsible use of global fish stocks. The MSC creates market incentives to support fishers to work towards change. But there is a challenge. The majority of the fish is caught in the south, but northern industrial fisheries are powerful and tend to dominate the market. What impact the Marine Stewardship Council has in developing or information poor countries is an ongoing area of research. Resources in regional seas and coastal areas have also received considerable attention in recent years. States use spatial planning to balance the interests of nature conservation with various extractive industries and shipping. At local levels, private sector actors are becoming more involved in marine conservation. Uh, in Curaçao, Tanzania and Indonesia, for example, the tourist sector is setting up what are labelled entrepreneurial marine protected areas, which have created new sources of funding. Are such arrangements fair for different resource users? And likewise, how durable are arrangements that involve NGOs and private sector actors? These questions are open for research. And what we find interesting is that the role of these states often remains important, but what they have to contribute is continually changing. Mm -hmm.